We're going to get into a whole lot of playing here in just a second, but before we do, real fast, why don't we talk about the equipment that you use, you know, starting with amps. I've been using Marshall amps for a while. 50 watt? And yeah, 50 watt Marshall amps because I like the low volume. You can get tons of hair and distortion and everything. And I love the sound of them because they've got lots of low end. and mm. Just something about the, the chunk that yeah. they get is really great. Now, I know you don't use a lot of effects on record because, you know, they get in the way of the, you know, the, the That's signal. Right. That's right. But on stage, what do you use? Live, I use, um, you know, just a little bit of echo uh, mm. or maybe a little bit of reverb. Um, I don't like to use a lot of effects yeah. live because the more stuff you put in your signal, the muddier it gets. So yeah. I just keep it pretty sparse. Now let's talk about this guitar. You designed this one yourself. Yeah, I did design this. It took me a little while. It was harder than I thought. But yeah. um, I came up with the exact kind of guitar that I've always wanted to have. The cutaway. Um, uh huh. I did this cutaway in the back because I love the way that looks. And uh, I used some pretty unique woods. I've got on the top a uh, koa, a flamed koa top, and I love the look of flame. Um, and that's a bright sounding wood. And in the back, I've got uh, mahogany, which is uh, very bass, you know, a lot of, a lot of bass in the sound. Mm -hmm. So you put those together, and you've got a very wide range of sounds. Um, and as far as the neck here, I found a wood called Pau Ferro. It's a Brazilian, very hard wood. And uh, the, the sustain is incredible. Sustains for days. Oh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> the pickups are EMGs. Yeah, I've always used EMGs. Um, they're, they're great for me because they're, they're really quiet as far as noise. Yeah. You know, there's no noise and they're very loud. Um, yeah. Now, this is a brand new EMG. Uh, it's not on the market yet, I don't think, but it has a coil tap in the humbucker, so mm -hmm. I can get that single coil sound. Great. It's a great thing, yeah. And I don't have a tone knob. The tone knob, I uh, disposed of that because I thought it was, you know, why have one? You don't use it. No, no yeah. one ever uses one. You use a Floyd Rose, of course. Yep, always use the Floyd Rose. I like it because I can adjust the tone arm yeah. how I like it, you know. And, uh, and I, I'm one of the only players that, that I know of that uses my, that keeps it right here, yeah. right next to the strings when I'm playing. So let's talk about how you have your guitar set up. Okay. As far as action is concerned, mm -hmm. I like it real low. Um... I do a lot of tapping, as you know, Yeah. and so when the action is low, I can just really fly around yeah. the neck, and I like that. Um, the only thing is, sometimes I have troubles with buzzing, so I uh, check it out by bending a note, usually on the high E string or the B string, and uh, then I whammy it yeah. to see if it frets out. I'll do it here in the middle of the neck, and then, you know, up here, and then I'll do it way up on the top, the highest note you can kind of play on a guitar. Good clear sound. Um, yeah, and then I'll just run up maybe a pentatonic scale and do it here mm -hmm. and see how it goes. Now, how do you actually like the fret height on your guitar? Well, I've noticed that on most of the guitars that you see in a music store have really big frets, jumbo yeah. frets, they call them, and your fingers really get stuck on them. Mine do, anyway. They get stuck on them. So uh, I get very flat frets that are very small. Um, and that really works for me. I can really slide around. Yeah. What string gauge do you use? Uh, from top to bottom, it's 42 on the low E. Mm -hmm. Then uh, 32, 24, 16, 11, and 9. 9. Now, unlike a lot of other hard rock players, you do something that Keith Richards popularized, Nashville stringing. Right. Which is something entirely different than this. <laughs> so I strung this up. We happen to have right here, guitar Nashville strung. Yeah. Which is really good for bringing out uh, different uh, tones on a record. Yeah, it really does work well. Um, we spent it on the song Madeline on, yeah. on the first record. We didn't have a 12-string guitar, so I just took the top end of a 12-string set and strung up my guitar with it. Yeah. Um, top to bottom, it sounds like... Very different nice sound. Nice chimey sound. Yeah, and, the, and Madeline will sound a lot different. It is nice, yeah. yeah. It's like... So I can really bring out a track then, so all the tonalities don't sound the same. Yeah, especially um, when you're using distortion. It doesn't sound like it does, but it really yeah. does. Scales. Let's talk about how you specifically go about incorporating them into your work? Do you have any kind of method? Yeah, I do. Um, just it's, it's pretty much by ear. You know, I listen to the piece of music 
and determine what kind of scale best suits it. Be it you know a pentatonic blues feel, yeah. or, or maybe it'll be mixolydian and real Egyptian sounding or something. But there are three scales that I use most of the time, which are the uh, major pentatonic scale, which in in A would be A, B, C sharp, E, F sharp. And that kind of sounds like it's kind of a country thing, or yeah. you can make it like blues. Gotta bend the strings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's also the blues pentatonic scale, which is pretty popular amongst yeah. rock players. Uh, in A, that would be A, C, D, E. I continue it up, of course, yeah. and that sounds real bluesy. That's the sound of that. Finger of vibrato and bending is essential there. Totally. Yeah. I use that more than anything. Um, also, a scale that I like to use a lot uh, is the Mixolydian scale. Mm -hmm which is a great word, mixolydian. Mixolydian. But uh, you can really hear it in Headed for Heartbreak, the beginning of that song. Is <laughs> and a saxophone kind of sound. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was. That's my tapping thing. But mixolydian scale is A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and back to A. Whammy bar is optional on that one. <laughs> right. Now, as you've been showing, you can play all these scales at different points on the neck, not just at the, you know, the root positions. That's right. Um, I guess a good example of that is uh, a major scale. If you take a C major scale, you know, if you play over an A. It sounds minor. Uh, that's a it's a minor scale over an A, right? Um, same thing if you play a D major scale over an A, it turns into mixolydian. But if you hear it over D, it's mm -hmm. major. So uh, the point is, is you can switch scales around to different places on the neck, and it'll sound like a different scale. Great, <laughs> I do that a lot. Now you have a little something uh, prepared here. That's right. This is a blues song that I wrote. Just I didn't write it. It's just a 12 bar blues. <laughs> for, uh, for you, the viewer, to jam along with me. Um, there's actually a section in it where I'll point to you and you can play along. Uh, I'll be using two scales. The major pentatonic scale and the blues pentatonic scale, both in the key of E. Uh, the major pentatonic looks like this. And also the blues pentatonic, which looks like this. And that's about it. So get your guitar and let's get ready to jam. <laughs>
Tapping. Tapping. You're a tap, tap kind of guy. Yeah, I like to tap. Now, everyone has a different approach, you know, different method of tapping. How is yours different from other players? Well, I'd say the first thing is that I never use my pinky when I'm not tapping. So uh, this is, in, in essence, my pinky. <laughs> okay. And it's more, it's got more strength than my pinky does, obviously. I use my middle finger. Um, the reason I use my middle finger is because it's more of, it's more in the middle of my hand, you know? It feels better to tap with my middle finger than with my first finger. Also, something we'll get into later is how I go up. I think that's a little bit different than okay. other people do it. Yeah. But the way that I go about doing it is I grab the neck with my pinky and uh, this ring, ring finger. Ring finger. Yeah. And also my thumb. Okay. Grab it, and I grab it hard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Kind of like that. And just whack the string. Okay. The most important thing when you're tapping is muting. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, you'll have strings ringing out all over the place when you're doing it. And the way that I mute is any strings that are below my left hand fingers, I mute with the flesh of those fingers. Any strings that are above the left hand fingers, like if my fingers are right here, yeah. you know, the E and the A and the D, I will mute with the fleshy part of my right hand palm here, okay. like so. So, example of that. If I'm going up when I tap, I'll mute with the flesh of my right hand. And if I'm going down, with my fingers of my left hand. Notice my right hand yeah, isn't even on there. Yeah. I'm sure everyone has their own approach, but where do you keep the pick? in your right hand when you go to a tapping phrase. Yeah, it's actually pretty important. You've got to practice tucking the pick inside of your first finger if you're going to tap with your middle finger like yeah. I do. That's exactly what I do do. If I'm doing a little lick, you see how quickly you have to tuck it up inside. Yeah. It uh, really works. Cool. <laughs> this might be rudimentary for some players, but for some people who don't know, how would we start with, say, a one-string hammer-on? Okay, let's start on the high E string. We'll play in E, E minor, you know, that E pentatonic. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's start by picking the E on the 12th fret, and then hammering F sharp, G, and A, like so. You want to try and, you know, obviously you grab, like I said, to grab, but you want to try and hit the note so it is just as loud as, you know, the other notes nice that you hit. Nice attack. Exactly. Same thing going down, except you're pulling off. Right. Okay. All pull-offs going down. Now, when you were first learning to tap, did you go about it slowly? I mean, everyone sees people, you know, going crazy and playing real fast. I mean, yeah. Do you recommend that a player start slow? I started by just tapping one note. You know? <laughs> Doing that kind yeah. of thing, you know? That was the in thing for a while. Um, now, how do we put it all together? Yeah, um, you put it all together, and it sounds something like this. And fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the same thing on the B string, if you do it on the B string. On the G string, still an E minor. Mm -hmm. And you can put it all together and you're like... But you right. got to figure out... You're going string to string now. That's right. you got to figure out how to get to the next string. Cross string tapping. Yes. Um, and when you get to the next string, there's two ways you can do it. You can either hammer on with the finger of your left hand or hammer on with the finger of your right hand. Okay. And I do both at different times. Like in Madeleine, which is pretty much the same lick that I was playing before, mm -hmm. you do the same lick. And then you hammer a D on the B string. Like so. So it's done. 
One more time. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Now you're on the next string. Right. And you continue with the tapping. So. Same thing to get to the G string. You play an A on the G string. Same thing on the D string. You play an E on the D string mm -hmm. by hammering. The whole thing again. And of course, uh, to speed. To, yeah, to yeah. speed, right. And that's, I do that in Madeleine. Now if I wanted to go string to string using the right hand as my guide. Right. Um, you do that. With, I do it with the tap finger. Sort of like this. Okay. So what I do is I have a tap note with my left hand finger mm -hmm. I'm holding. And then I just go and tap a note on the next string with the right hand finger. Okay. Like so. <laughs> okay? Okay. I'll do it all the way down the neck. So like... You just kind of pick notes and hit them with yeah. your right hand, but, you know, do it on the next string down. Anybody who's seen you play the solo to 17 has seen kind of a cool thing that you do. It's a real flashy tapping up technique. Right. It's something that I just figured out myself because I really wanted to be able to fly up a scale. Yeah. But I never could do it. And I see these guys who use their first finger to do it. They hammer on with their first finger to get up to the next string. Right. But I can never do that because when I play, my first finger hangs out too, just like my pinky does. Pretty much, you know, it just uh, bars the, uh, the strings. <laughs> I really don't move it much. So I'm not used to moving it, and I don't want to have to learn how to move yeah. it. So what I did was um, I figured out a way to go up using the ring finger of my right hand, pulling off the next string. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You go up an E minor scale, let's say. Okay, and you're on a tapped note. And you fret the next note up in the scale but lightly, you know. Fret the next note and pull off with the ring finger of your right hand. Like that. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like... Now, I get a really smooth sound this way. Yeah. Um, one thing you have to remember when you're doing though, when you're doing it, though, is take your tapping finger off of the string when you're pulling off with your ring finger, like so. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm taking it off, but I take it off and I rest it on the string like so. I guess I don't rest it on the string. <laughs> I just I take it off, I take my hand off, so it doesn't ring out. It's going up fast. It's, and I can just, when I go up a scale, I can go up it and then go back down on one string like this. You also do that in Headed for Heartbreak, too. That's right. Yeah, yeah uh, that's in a Mixolydian scale. And that's like this. In C sharp? Yeah. You can see me pulling off the next string with the uh, ring finger of my yeah. right hand. A lot of people who, you know, tap tend to sound the same. It's almost like they're not putting enough imagination into it. What kind of, you know, little tricks do you have maybe to break some cliches? I have a couple things that I do. One of them is I move the tapping finger around. I don't just tap the same note right. all the time. Like, um, I don't just go... Yeah. I mean, you know, that's moving this bottom one, but um, I try and move the tap finger around. You 
you know, like kind of like that. Already, there's more variety to that than right. what a lot of guys do. Yeah. Yeah. What's um, What's another thing? Uh, maybe sliding it to okay. different yeah. notes, uh, sort of like um, one thing I do. If, if you watch it when I'm going down the scale, I'll do a little slide now. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. Yeah. And sliding around, that helps. And double taps. Oh, yeah. Double taps. You know, so you can do the same thing on any of the strings. This thing really helps. This is a great way to get out of that, you know, cliche tapping cliche. kind of thing. You can do it with two fingers, too, here. You know, so instead of just... That's a little bit boring. Yeah. If you go like... Okay, if you're doing something like that... That works really great. And you can do it like... So you would encourage players to really, you know, have fun with their own ideas and throw in different rhythmic patterns and... Absolutely. Just not really do the boxed in little things that they see. Branch out. Yeah. <laughs> so you do. Yeah, well, I try. Um, so I've got an example here of tapping. And uh, I'll try and use all the techniques that we just described. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, so here it is. Funny thing is, talking so much about lead playing is some players still neglect rhythm. With good reason, I think. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can understand because it, when, guitar is a pretty glamorized instrument. It, when you want to be a rock star when you're a little kid, you don't want to go out and play rhythms. You want to go out and play solos. Yeah. Um, and I understand that, but you have to know how to play rhythms if you're going to play with other people. That's all there is to it. And if you're going to make an album, you're going to be in the studio. You've got to do more rhythms than you do solos. You have to have good timing. Exactly. So, um, practicing with a uh, metronome is a great idea, mm -hmm. or practicing with a record, even. I used to do that. That was my answer to that. One of the things in rhythm playing is uh, it's important to mute all the chords that you play right. when you when you got distortion and you're going through a big Marshall stack and all that stuff. Um, you don't want to be not muting any of the chords because it's going to sound like... You know, the same thing. A lot cleaner. A lot cleaner. Yeah. So keep your palm on the strings when you're playing. Yeah. Not too hard, just very softly. And you can actually just mute it. As opposed to... Yeah, that yeah. was the sloppy way and the correct way. <laughs> right. One of the cool uh, kind of traits about your rhythm playing is how you vary it with lots of cool little transitional lines. I do that a lot in my writing on purpose because I get real bored of just hitting chords, you know. Um, a couple examples are uh, on our new record, uh, a song called You Are the Saint, I Am the Sinner. Mm -hmm. um, the riff is, it's more like a riff than a, than a rhythm, but it's... 
Okay, that's a lick that I threw in there when I was writing it. But just so it wouldn't get boring, I didn't do the same lick the second time. Right. The second time it goes. So it's that's actually a different lick than, you know? Yeah. Uh, same thing in Poison Angel. Mm -hmm. When I'm doing uh, the verse in Poison Angel, it's... Uh, Okay, I threw a lick mm -hmm. in there. Um, that's what I do the first time. The second time I go. So there's two of them. Or. So I just kind of spice it up yeah. and keep it different. Any good bass player can, you know, do a unison thing with you. And, exactly. And something like that. Yeah. You know, when you're home, when you're working on, you know, new songs, you know, what kind of, you know, method do you really have for jamming on new riffs and eventually you know, realizing that you have a song there. That's where arranging comes in. Um, when, you're, when you're arranging a song, you just have to kind of figure out what chords go well together. Yeah. And ultimately, what you want to do is build the song into a good chorus, you know, into a chorus that's going to really bring the listener in when he's listening to the song. So you just have to figure out what chords sound good together. Yeah. And that's basically what I do. Um, you know, let's talk about a couple picking patterns maybe you might have. I mean, you know, you don't just do the same right. downstrokes, upstrokes. I mean, but there isn't any set way that I do it. Um, I really do it what feels the best. Sometimes it's one down, two up. Sometimes it's all down. And sometimes it's, you know, all up. Mm -hmm. It just depends on feeling. But, you know, I can do it. It's just all kinds of ways, I guess. And I can do it all down, all up, down, up, down, up. It's like, you know. One, that's one way I have of doing it that I do a lot. Right. Um, two downs, one up. Two down, one up. Two down, one up is a big time thing with me. <laughs> so a kid can really just try and, you know, do different picking patterns on one string, two strings, three. Right. See which know. one works best for you. Yeah. Um, now let's talk about bar chords you know I mean anyone who starts playing the first thing they really have to do is you know master some bar chords yeah but you're able to turn bar chords into you know cool intros to songs well uh, there's there's a couple of them that I do use bar chords I, I take a bar chord and I'll, I'll do the old suspended fourth with my pinky mm -hmm. a lot a lot of people use that. Uh, I do that in 17, for instance, right. when I go. And I use the suspended fourth here and the major second. So it's like... You know, so you can do lots of things. That's, that's, that's second. You know, also, I've noticed that you do a lot of fragmented chords, you know, you'll break the chord. That's right. Out. I guess Hungary's a good example of that off the top of my head. Um, I play an A chord a lot of times just like this. Um, and the way I do it is just, it's an E chord. And just the first two notes of that all move down one string, like this. Right. And then you play the open A string. And Hungary goes like this. <laughs> so, how I wrote Hungry mm -hmm. was just, you know, I had an A chord here and, you know, had my wild way of playing A. And I tried to figure out different chords that I could play um, just while I was pedaling this A. Mm -hmm. And so I took this chord and moved it down. Moved it down again. And uh, there's just so many different possibilities and I started to switch my fingers around on the G string and the D string mm -hmm. and I came up with lots of different chords. Pretty neat. Yeah. You know, I mean talking about the notes, sometimes you can play the same note uh, just in a different way and it can sound, you know, totally new. I mean, you got a new song called um, Loosen Up. Oh, yeah, and, that's a good one. you know, your rhythmic work on that is really cool. Yeah, one of the things I do on that that's, that's different um, is a little hit of the 
high E string and the B together when I'm playing an E. I've done that on a couple songs. Uh, that song goes... Uh, kind of a funky yeah. thing. But you can use oh, that... Just like DNA. Right. Yeah. You can use that uh, B and E hit anywhere. Um, the way you find it is, uh, let's say you're playing an A bar chord right here. You just follow your first finger down to the B and E strings mm -hmm. and bar them, and that's where it is in A, an octave higher. But whenever you're just getting funky, you know, it sounds pretty right. cool. Yeah, yeah. awesome solo. Thank you. <laughs> One of the things that um, we should talk about from the solo is your use of harmonics. Yeah, uh, that's one thing that I've always done. Um, first thing you should know is how to find them. Um, if you've never played harmonics before, you should just rest your finger on the 12th fret and then uh, 12th fret A string and then pick the note. And that's what a harmonic is. You can hear all the different harmonic points on the neck if you just rest your finger on 
the A string and then pick the A string and move your finger down the string. All those overtones are yeah. called harmonics. Now what I do is I whack them out at all the points where they sound. And basically it's over the frets where the position markers are. Like a 12th fret. And then And then I give it a little whammy, mm -hmm. but the only way you can do it is if you mute all the other strings right? Uh, with your forefinger and your thumb. Okay. Um, and you can pick them as well. Uh, the really interesting thing is between the second fret and the third fret, there are three harmonic notes. Okay. You can get them by hitting over the third fret, or between the second and third, and over the second fret. So you have to kind of search for that sweet spot yeah. in there and find it, and yeah. like, annoy your parents while doing so. Yeah, and then I use the <laughs> and then I use the whammy um, in the beginning of the solo, and then you know bring it down like so. And then you can do it on the D string. And the E string. If anyone wanted to hear this on record, all they have to do is listen to the beginning of your solo in Madeleine. Right. You know, when the band stops. That's right. Um, there I'm picking the notes as opposed to just whacking them like I was just doing before. Um, and that's on the G string. And I, I also use the whammy. I came up on the G, 12th fret. Like so. It's kind of neat. One of the most powerful tools, you know, on a guitar these days, but also one of the most misused is, you know, the vibrato bar, the, the whammy bar. Right. What's your take on that? I've seen that before. Definitely uh, players that just get their new whammy bar, they totally go nuts yeah. with it. Um, I like to use the same vibrato on my whammy bar as I do with my left hand when I'm vibratoing a note. Um, as opposed to... Almost the same, and all it takes is a very light uh, up and down movement with yeah. the arm to get that effect. You know? Much like a singer's vibrato. That's right, or a horn player. Yeah. yeah, we talked about this at the top of the video. Um, you have a pretty tight whammy bar. A lot of players have a loose bar. That's right. Yeah, uh, most of them that I've seen just keep it real loose. Yeah. Um, when I play, I play all with my hand in the same position. You know. It never moves. I, mean, I don't do any of this kind of stuff, you know. So yeah. um, I just keep it right here so I can just grab right up to it yeah. if I have to go right into it. And I don't have to um, take my pinky and pull it over uh, like the other guys that I've seen do it do. A wasted motion. It seems that way to me, but, you know, I will. How many springs do you have on the back of your I've got three. Bridge? Three springs? <laughs> there we go. There's three back there. Um, and I think if, if you have two, it does too much of this. Uh, 
you know, it starts yeah. to, yeah. You know, and then I've never tried four, so maybe well, one day I will. There's kind of, you know, varying opinions about, you know, having the bar set up for pullback. Some people block their bars at... Right, so it stays in tune. Yeah. Yeah, I don't agree with doing that because Bam. then I can't pull up on the bar at all, like not even a little bit. Um, if I want to do my vibrato thing, I'm pulling up a little bit when I do that. Yeah. Also, um, I like to just go up with a harmonic and go up as far as I want. You know? um, so that would really restrict me if I couldn't pull up you know, a long way. So I've got it routed out back here just to yeah. help me out. One of the things from the live solo you did was uh, wavering harmonics. Right, the, this thing. Yeah, yeah I just uh, like to take the note a uh, whole step down. You know, and once you can learn to do that, then you can make up little things to do once you hit the harmonic. And all it takes is just knowing where to stop yeah. with your whammy. You just have to use your ear. Yeah, and a good way to practice getting, you know, a whole step down and a whole step up is on the G string. You can mute all the other strings but the G with this finger and your thumb, your ring finger and your thumb of your left hand. Then try and dive the G string down to an F. And then adding whammy when yeah. you're down there. It's kind of hard because you've got all that spring tension yeah. on the whammy. And then try bringing it up to an A. That's a lot to do because there's not as much spring tension. And then try it with your harmonics. So that could improve your ear and uh, it'll also give you a little bit of a workout on... Uh, Accuracy with your fingers. Too. Yeah, but this, you know, the whammy bar can work just as good with chords than just That's single right. notes. Yeah, uh, in the intro that we did, uh, you might notice that one lick I did. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to just kind of pull anything that I can with the whammy, and uh, you can get kind of a slide guitar sound. That sounds like a slide. Yeah. Yeah. Me. In one of our Guitar World columns, you uh, did something, uh, the Arabian pull. Well, that's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just where you just play a note and then pull up oh, sharp, real fast, abrupt. very sharp, and then let go. And it sounds like this. Yeah. That's the Mixolydian that I'm using there that sounds very good with it. Cool. You know, at the top of this, we were talking about misuse, but what are a couple cool, funky noises that can be done with the bar? There's lots of things. I guess Jimi Hendrix started out doing all yeah. that, you know, wild stuff, and I just figured out a couple things sitting around in my room. In Poison Angel, there's a break right before the solo where I take my middle finger and press it between the two pickups, like so, and then I reach underneath. It's a lot easier when I'm standing, but I reach underneath and depress the wind. Like that. It's kind of a little thing. Another thing I do, I saw Adrian Ballou do a long time ago, um, where you just kind of hit these strings and it gets some noise in there.
I think a lot of players would be interested in, you know, your influences, how you started to play, who you listened to when you were growing up. Well, at first it was a lot of blues influences, um, like Aerosmith and, uh, you know, most of the people were playing in the pentatonic scales and I was into all that. And then I started getting into more of a fusion type thing with Jean-Luc Ponty and Larry Carlton, uh, a lot of more jazzy players, but mainstream jazz, like more in kind of stuff, not yeah. the real out weird stuff. Um, and if you ever listen to my playing, that's really the kind of uh, music that I make. So you really mix it up. Yeah, I think that's a good piece of advice to offer um, people learning the guitar, is to listen to all different kinds of styles yeah. of music and pick the ones you like and then put them together to make your own style. Because a lot of people, you know, they ask me, well, how do you get your own style? That's what it is. It's just listening to all your favorite stuff and putting it together into your own stuff. Yeah. All right.